welcome back to my channel my name is Doug and I've got another fountain pen video for you today today it's a vintage 1954 Parker 51 that's on loan to me from a friend and I've done some restore work on it and we're gonna take a look at that pen right now <laughs> This one is going to be a work in progress kind of video. I'm going to do some time lapses probably. This is my friend's Parker 51, uh, and this is in a set. I showed this earlier. I took it to a pen shop here in Calgary, and they basically told me, no, uh, we're not gonna touch it because it's such a vintage item. There's too much liability involved. So uh, I asked my friend for permission and he said, yes, you can go ahead and give it a try to uh, restore it. It probably hasn't been inked up in over 30 years. Uh, and it certainly looks like there's a lot of uh, crudding ink in there. The aerometric filler seems to be flexible. Uh, my ultrasonic cleaner just arrived. It's a uh, a cheap little uh, ultrasonic that just works on batteries. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the ultrasonic. I'm going to do this for probably a few days. Um, work on the body, getting that all polished up with some micro mesh. And I'm going to see about working on this cap just to get some of the grime off it. Uh, it is gold filled, not gold plated. And so I'm going to sort of document the process as we go. Okay, so here we are with the restored Parker 51. Well, restored as much as this amateur can restore stuff. But they're amateurs. I'm pretty happy with the results I've achieved. Let's put that aside. Just to reiterate the steps that I took for this restore, first I put the pen and attached filler sack into a bath of plain water in my ultrasonic cleaner. Then I let it run continuously, only stopping to swap out rechargeable batteries for like uh, 12 hours. Water seemed to be coming out pretty well, so I figured I might not have to disassemble the pen. I was correct because once I dried the pen completely, I decided to give it a try by inking it up with Hiroshizuku Kanpeki. I was thrilled when it wrote for the first time and very, very well. It turns out that this is a fine nib. The next thing I did was I, I worked on cleaning the cap. I used a toothbrush with one part water and one part white vinegar and just scrubbed, rinsed, and dried it. Then I made a paste of baking soda and water and used the toothbrush once again, scrubbing, rinsing, and drying it. The final step, and the one that I did very cautiously, was to polish and rub the cap with Meguiar's Swirl Remover too. This is a very fine polishing compound and is finely abrasive. So I took it slow and looked at the cap frequently with a loop to ensure that none of the gold was being removed. This is a gold filled cap so there is more gold on it than on gold plate. I would never ever use this uh, polishing compound on gold plate as it will remove gold in seconds. As to the body and section resin, I spent about two hours on them. This is the most invasive part of the restore and so I asked permission of the owner first. I went through the eight levels of grit abrasion micro mesh I have one step at a time from the coarse 1800 grit to the very fine 1200 grit. By being diligent I was able to keep the sanding even. I spent more time with the 12,000 grit than any other, and as I saw there were still abrasion marks here and there, I would step back to the 4,000 and work forward again. Then I used Meguiar's swirl removing co polishing compound again and worked the paste over and over again until I got a polished shine. Finally, I added Zymol non-silicone wax to protect the shine. I didn't complete the restoration on the ballpoint or the pencil as I wanted to compare them to the restored fountain pen. Let's see the comparison right now. As you can see, the three pens came in this Imperial Trio faux ostrich case, which I'm told was a set that was um, sold in Canada. So here, let's take a look at this, the pen and the pencil and the fountain pen together. Here's the restore on the fountain pen. 
the gold cap. You can see I, there are still some abrasion marks and so forth because I didn't want to go too deeply into that gold surface. But it, it shines up really nicely. Here's a comparison of what it looked like on the pen and the pencil. So and these weren't quite as uh, grimy as the pen was. So let's look at the restored pen. This particular pen was probably made around 1954 and sold as part of that Imperial Trio with the matching ballpoint and pencil. Um, it has a 12 karat gold filled cap with seven lines tapering design. You see those seven lines taper to a point on the cap. The finial, there it is, has a frosted white jewel and there's that classic Parker clip. I'm told that uh, this was such a status symbol back in the 40s and 50s that Parker actually sold just the cap so that uh, if you couldn't afford this fountain pen, which was, wasn't as cheap as you'd think it was, it was a fairly substantial price, um, but you could buy just the cap and keep that in your shirt pocket to show everybody that you owned a Parker 51. That's how uh, much of a, a cachet that, that this particular cap had. The cap is slightly tapered up to where it meets with the resin body right here, and then tapers slowly down to a rounded point. The cap has a slip clutch mechanism which slides off to reveal the hooded nib. And that is the hooded nib that this pen is famous for. The hooded design was first introduced by Parker in 1941 and has been widely copied, as most successful designs are. The hooded nib required a complete redesign and re-engineering of the nib and feed system. These innovations improved the pen's ability to reduce ink drying in the nib and the feed, and by protecting the nib from the air. The section is long and tapered and is remarkably comfortable. No wonder people have loved these pens so much throughout the decades. You can grip it everywhere on this pen. Let's look at that hidden nib. So you can almost see it peeking out there. I've not taken this section apart as it is writing fine now. Uh, writing well, I should say. It is writing fine, but it is also writing well without having to dissemble it. But uh, I'm 99% sure this is a 14 karat gold nib. You can see the gold, and I don't believe they gold-plated any of these, especially back in 1954. The cap post deeply and securely. This is one of the most satisfying aspects of this pen. The smooth cap and uncap and deep posting, and the resulting feel of this pen in the hand when it's posted make this pen a, a joy to hold and to write with. I should mention the capping mechanism briefly here. This was an innovation as well back in 1941. The clutch ring here separates the section from the body um, and there's a clutch inside the cap that engages with that clutch ring. So it's a simple slip on and slip off process that's as elegant in its engineering as it is uh, as elegant as it feels in the hand. Let's look at the filling system. The barrel comes off and there is a permanent uh, filling mechanism here attached to the section. Um, it is a latex sack that has a, a metal bar across it that you press with your thumb or your finger while you're dipping the pen in the ink. And uh, it squeezes that uh, latex sack and then sucks up ink. There's a filler tube through here as well that uh, reaches to about here um, that goes from the, the feed right there all the way up to here. And as you squeeze it, it pumps in more liquid than it expels air. And the instructions are actually on the 
the pen itself. To fill, press ribbed bar firmly four times using dry writing super chrome ink. Holding the pen down, wipe point with soft tissue. The Parker Pen Company made in USA, Parker 51. This was the second filling system that came with this pen. In 1941, it came with Parker's vacuumatic system, which was like a button filler. But uh, later on, uh, certainly by 1954, it was replaced by this aerometric system. I filled this pen up with a Rochizuku Kanpeki. I'm not concerned about that uh, because the pen's super chrome ink that says here on uh, fill it with super chrome ink, but apparently that ink was super corrosive as well as uh, being a super chrome uh, and uh, destroyed a lot of these pens. So modern inks are not nearly as corrosive. And I've looked at pH values of a number of different inks, and the Konpeki uh, is not a, a danger to this pen. Um, and I've heard from Parker 51 owners that have their grandfather's and their father's pens and have used a Roshizuku in them for years with no issues. Still, to be safe, I hear that Waterman's Serenity Blue is a very gentle ink for these type of vintage pens. All in all, this is a beautiful fountain pen that feels great in the hand and is well balanced. The combination of gold and this beautiful burgundy body uh, is really sublime in my opinion. And here are some size comparisons, some dimensions, and a writing sample. Are you going to Scarborough Fair? Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Okay, now it's time for the writing sample. This is the, I gotta get the right, right around. This is the Parker 51, 1954. This is a fine nib. Now you notice that was not the pen's fault. That was my fault for not being over my page here. Uh, it's hard to see that nib. So notice that some Chinese pen copies of uh, the Parker 51 or homages to the Parker 51 have an arrow built into the hood here that shows you the right side up for that nib. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. So the ink today is Hiroshizuku. Con Pecky. Let's check the wetness. This is a, a lot wetter a pen than I expected with that uh, tiny little nib. I thought, especially with this fine line that it's giving me, I thought it would be a little drier than that, but it's very, very wet, very pleasing. Writes smoothly in all directions. And there's very little line variation that's pressing fairly substantially on the page. I'm not getting any line variation. That's typical of these uh, hooded nib pens. So let's do some writing. That's very smooth, and it's got just a hint of feedback. Lovely experience. I have to say that I was thrilled when this 60-year-old pen started writing instantly and began writing as if it had never stopped. Uh, so now some reverse writing. Yeah, it does do a little bit, but it's very scratchy and very dry. And finally, some quick writing. It 
So that feed really, really keeps up. I'm very pleased that it cleaned out so, so well and I didn't have to disassemble that. So there you have it, a newly restored 1954 Parker 51 that looks and writes like it was brand new. I'll probably now get the ballpoint and the pencil working and looking as good as this and return them to the owner. It's been a privilege to have them in my possession for the last month or so. And thanks go out to Ron for loaning me this, this beautiful pen set, pen and pencil set. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified of new videos when they're posted. So that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.